All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, yesterday, Acting National Director of National Intelligence Richard Grinnell, he declassified the names of multiple Obama administration officials who unmasked the identity of former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn in the waning days of their White House tenure. Now, some of the names are, of course, very familiar, and you got nice and rich from their Russiagate grift. James Comey, CNN contributor James Clapper, MSNBC contributor John Brennan, cronies like Susan Rice or Samantha Power. But the very last name on the list was one that especially raised eyebrows, that of Vice President Joseph R. Biden. It's important to note that the dozens of officials who unmasked Flynn's names are not confirmed to have actually seen the underlying intelligence regarding his now famous phone call with the Russian ambassador at the time. But we do know that it was under their authority that the information was sought by the NSA. So the revelation that Biden's authority was used to unmask Flynn, it's a major bombshell, given that we learned last week he was alongside former President Barack Obama in the Oval Office when he personally informed Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates about the Flynn phone call with the Russian ambassador. That set off the bizarre chain of events in which the incoming administration basically set up Flynn to lie to the FBI and be prosecuted. This is an especially big problem for Biden, because not only could it leave him vulnerable to having to testify under oath for the United States Senate about his own role in all of this unmasking, but it contradicts what he said in his latest basement cave interview with George Stephanopoulos in full on this subject. Let's take a listen. I know nothing about those moves to investigate Michael Flynn, number one. Number two, this is all about diversion. I do want to press that. You say you didn't know anything about it, but you were reported to be at a January 5th, 2017 meeting where you and the president were briefed on the FBI's plan to question Michael, Michael Flynn over those uh, conversations he had with the Russian ambassador Kislyak. No, I thought you asked me whether or not I had anything to do with him being prosecuted. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I was aware that there was that there, they asked for an investigation, but that's all I know about it. And I don't think anything else. Now, maybe he was confused or maybe he's not. And you can see that Biden first claims that he knew nothing about the Flynn investigation and then admits that he was briefed on it, but not involved. Well, requesting information on the incoming national security advisor seems pretty involved. And look, I know these details. They seem annoying and tiring, but they are important because, number one, whether you like it or not, this is going to be a big story on the Republican side for the foreseeable future. And number two, because of the Russiagate madness that the establishment Democrats and the media put us through over the last two years. Look, there is nothing illegal about unmasking, though I think there should probably be a tough conversation around that. But there is something illegal about leaking intelligence to the media. And it was on the very same day that Biden received intelligence about Michael Flynn that the details of his call with the Russian ambassador appeared in the Washington Post opinion section published by David Ignatius. Again, the details of this story could indicate that the current Democratic nominee for president of the United States played a central role in the illegal dissemination of a politically damaging leak and sparking of an investigation on the incoming and rival political administration. Now, look, which way, whichever way you look at it, that is an unbelievable scandal in American politics. And because of who the players are in today's media, who literally employ some of the central players out there acting as if there is nothing to see. Earlier this week, I remarked how in the last week we have seen the simultaneous implosion of the Russiagate story and of Me Too. And this is a further extension of that. Just like the Tara Reid story, where the facts of the case could not be better for showing the contradictory nature of the Democrats' initial response, this story now has far more credence and evidence to back it up than any P-tape or speculation about being a Russian asset in 1987 ever did. But the media refuses to actually pick it up. And worse, they're playing defense. And in a perfect encapsulation of all of the complicity in this moment from the media, moments after the story was broken by CBS News' Catherine Herridge the Biden campaign responded, quote, scoop, Catherine Herridge is a partisan right wing hack who is a regular conduit for conservative media manipulation ploys because she agrees to publicize things before contacting the target to ask for comment. 
That comes, of course, just a week after the Biden campaign vowed to always be polite and fair to the free press. But even better, not a single journalist who preens and cries about how they're all under attack by Trump whenever criticized by somebody on the right said one word of solidarity in response. Not a peep, except for the always consistent Glenn Greenwald. Their hypocrisy truly knows no bounds, and they cannot stop this story from catching on. First of all, Crystal, I thought it was a real classy move for the Biden campaign to do that. Be like, oh, right wing hack. I mean, that's that's terrible. I mean, look, yeah. Like, and when Trump does it and all of that, these are the same people who talk about freedom of the press and, oh, you know, don't worry. Like, you're always going to be on your side. They that get out rhetoric, the smelling salts. They clutch exactly. the, oh, how could he? But it shows that the rhetoric is really, we'll be nice to you and you be nice to us. But it's not it's not going to be across the board. It's very much so that if you cross us, we'll use the same tactics against you. And I mean, look, I don't think the media should be treated great, but like like I think there should be an adversary there be a level of respect. Right? But yeah. there needs to be a level of respect. And there's just nothing there. But I mean, on the story itself, like I said, I know the details and all the stuff are tiring. But if you think about the level of evidence and all of that that comes on be behind this story relative to the coverage of Russiagate by MSNBC and CNN, then there is just no question mm -hmm. that it bears investigation. And yet, who do they employ? Ben Rhodes, a central player in this thing. They employ James Clapper. Yep. They employ John Brennan. Yep. I mean, Vice President Biden, they might as well pay for him. <laughs> how much that they defend him. And you can see, I mean, already I saw yesterday, Andrea Mitchell, who of course is, you know, one of the longtime friend of all these people, saying there were all these unmaskings on the Trump administration. Can you stop gaslighting us? Again, this isn't about the gas. This isn't about the unmasking itself. Although I think we have a lot of concerns about the fact that a U.S. citizen can just be unmasked by whoever they want in the highest levels of the government, even if that means the incoming member of a political administration. It's that they leak it to the Washington Post and they gin up all this hysteria. I mean, you remember the early days of the Trump administration. Yeah. A lot of very smart people in this town were legitimately convinced that Michael Flynn was a Russian asset, that the P tape was real the dossier and all of that. I mean, they gaslit the entire country. This was a bomb. This yeah. was a bombshell moment because, um, I mean, for one thing, like, Michael Flynn handled himself stupidly. Michael and Flynn like lied all of to the, the FBI. Right. He lied, violated lied the FARA. Lied to the all that. Yeah, like, everything. all that is, certain, like, yeah. let's just stipulate yeah. that. And it's part of, but that was a key reason why, and the fact that that report then came out that said, no, in fact, he did talk to Kislyak, even though he said he didn't. And, you know, some of the details and the content of those conversations, it was the fact that that report came out after Flynn had lied about it that essentially made everyone feel like there was, like, this big nefarious plot rather than a bunch of, like, bumbling incompetent idiots, which was much closer to the truth. But the piece with Biden and the piece with the media, first of all, you're absolutely right. Like, they covered this story every single segment, every single hour of the day. So to have a major development like this, where some of the people involved are literally on your payroll payroll, and be like, nothing to see here. And like, look, we get it, there's a pandemic. Yeah. But you have 24 hours a day. Yeah. Certainly you could find some slot <laughs> to like cover this story. Maybe, just maybe. Yeah. There's that piece. Then there's the piece, and this keeps coming up, not just in this story, but in mm. general, about Biden and whether he's telling the truth. Like, do people feel like they can trust him mm -hmm. when you you have to give at least some credit to George Stephanopoulos for doing his job and asking Joe Biden about this? Because you see that piece of information of him being put on the record ends up being very important. He's very dismissive. I know nothing. He's like, oh, I, know, I was I know briefed nothing. on I was, it. And right. then it was then it, it was only after he was pressed. He's like, well, I was briefed on, it, but I had nothing to do with it. I mean, if your name is on that list. That doesn't look like nothing to do with it. That, that doesn't look like I really knew nothing about it at all. And so I think, like, this will be another one of those stories that you just wonder when he bothers to do another interview, do they actually press him on this? Do they press him on tar? Yeah. Do they just give him the softball? You already know how it's going to go. The right has seized on your conversation. The right has seized. This is how it goes. It's the conservative pounce narrative. They're like, yeah, the right. Pounce conservative on. pounce on Biden's on Matt. Everyone. So the They'll, they'll be like, well, Mr. Or Mr. Vice President, the right is very obsessed with this. Do you have any response? That's it. Right. No, like, hey, did you know? Why did you unmask this person? Why were you involved in the, in the process itself? Why were you and Obama in the Oval Office telling Sally Yates about this? I mean, 
setting up the incoming national security advisor for a Logan Act violation based on, I mean, literally doing his job. And this is why I like that we have friends of the show like Matt Taibbi and Glenn Greenwald who are covering the story vociferously because Matt Taibbi, I played that clip a couple of days ago. He's like, look, you're talking about an outgoing administration setting up an incoming administration. Yeah. If the Trump administration did that, it would be insane and they would probably be prosecuted for it. And frankly, rightfully so. I think anybody who does that, I mean, this is like Nixon LBJ level stuff that we were supposed to have put behind us. And actually that highlights another piece of this with Biden, which we talk a lot here on the show about the Jamie Dimon and all these other people. But remember on that list, List. Who's getting floated for SecDef? Who's getting floated for CIA director? Who's getting floated for national security advisor? These are longtime members of the national security state. The people who brought us Libya, Afghanistan, yep. Iraq, ISIS. The, I mean, Libya alone, in my view, is dis- if you touch that, never again. Yeah. I mean, and yet, another thing that no one talks about. In the nobody press, by the ever way. <laughs> talks about that, right? In the press, you're like, hey, Mr. Vice President, like, what did you do with the whole Libya situation? And you, see, you can see that, I mean, we are bringing in, importing, essentially the same policy that we saw under Obama, which was a heightened and strengthened national security state, yep. which preached one way and behaved entirely the other. And same thing on the war. I mean, we literally know how this story goes. And I mean, I just think that it is one of the most overlooked elements of, do you really want to vote for somebody who is going to empower the national security bureaucracy in order to go after their political opponents? I mean, I think that's crazy. Yeah. And yeah. it's also a story about the way that the Democratic Party lost their minds in the yeah. Trump era. Well, that's you know? a Glenn Greenwald I mean, this, is, yeah. <laughs> this has become the, the obsession. Anytime you, you know, don't go along with whatever they want you to, you're a Russian agent, even Chris Hayes, for daring to even talk about mm-hmm. talking. Reed is a Russian agent and should be fired. I mean, it all comes back to this like root of the problem here with Mike Flynn and the way that story was interpreted and how it spun out from there. And it has created the dynamic that we see today where Number one, it's fed into this idea that, you know, Trump is this nefarious mastermind and we must abandon all of our principles, whatever we can do to possibly get him out. And two, it has fed into this incredibly conspiratorial mindset. I mean, incredibly, like the things that are just that are floated by mainstream commentators, pundits, anchors, et cetera, on a regular basis now about Russia or even other just there's this this, like conspiracy minded approach that has taken hold in the Democratic Party. And a lot of it comes back to this moment. Absolutely. And look, here's a conspiracy, an outgoing president and a vice president and a Washington Post reporter setting up or Washington Post columnist setting up and the FBI setting up an incoming administration. Wow. That's a real conspiracy. And nobody wants to talk about it. All right. I'm looking forward to your radar next, Crystal. 